the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture, mental health to economics, relationships to life lessons. Join us each and every Tuesday on WAC 90.1 FM. The Living Room. Casual conversations on serious topics. It is now 6 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked onto the True Nation Station WACK 90.1 FM where we are. Culture c -c -c crazy. First and foremost, let's kick the pick this off as we always do, all right? We must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gift of life and seek another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to those that went before us, and we are not just talking about our ancestors, the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago, the Tainos and the Cardinalos, because we all know, accept, reiterate, and they say it with the chest that Columbus lied. But also to our bro brother in music, Tony Prescott, where the P this week stands for? Pretty comment, bro. What's Pretty that? What well, I'm there. Now, just, the, the place real heavy, this last round. And yeah. Uh, trying not to use the people on them airwaves uh, for too much of my personal position on this but Trinidad is a very unique country in terms of its ethno and religious uh, makeup and we see in some interesting lines being drawn in terms of the personal, public, political, national uh, stances regarding the Israeli-Hamas situation. And the reason I say Israeli-Hamas and not Israeli-Palestine is because Israel's problem is with the Hamas. Palestinians feel and have reason to believe that Israel's problem is with Palestine. Israel's position is such that they deserve the right to exist as a state. Some of the actions that their leaders would have taken over the past 75 years would have generated consequences that Israel as a nation is facing today. As a country that has a strong Christian presence as well as a strong Muslim presence, we see in that lines being drawn in terms of people support what they believe and the, su the support like supports like uh we also see in that the lines not just being drawn in terms of the religious positions but also the ethnic positions because palestine has been subject to varying forms of oppression under israeli influence over the past couple decades and as i say no party is absent it's poor decisions but we're in a real uncomfortable place right now. So predicament is there's a there's a silent polarization that is occurring and it will probably become a lot less silent over time. But I just have my eyes on the predicament that we're in as a people. Because now, despite our general ability to exist in a space with each other, our ideals and ideologies are going to start to call for some support and that might be polarizing so pretty commentary no i kind of like that word at purely face value because it's a pre it's a predicament that a lot of us face and i'm not belittling in any way the situation that is taking place in the middle east but let's bring that back home to your own, our own individual lives a lot of us are trapped, battling family issues, relationship issues, economical issues, just in general life issues. And as you said, Ricardo, the history is the history of it. Who may have, have, have fired the first missile 45 or how much ever years ago? It doesn't make it right that somebody fires a missile today. Mm. Retaliation and kind is one thing, 
But if you remember the good book that Ricardo so eloquently quotes on most occasions, one must turn the other cheek. Hmm. And also remember the turn that the meek shall inherit the earth. But meek don't mean strip it. As Ricardo had eloquently put across to us some time ago, meek does not mean stupid. It means that you have to understand the situation that you are in and sometimes put forward the best response given the information which you know and the outcome that you are trying to achieve. So if in your own personal situations, you are battling to break a general generational curse within your family, sometimes it takes stepping back assessing the situation and making the changes on your level do try to force somebody else into what you trying to do hmm. right and i think that's a lesson a lot of us feel to learn and a lot of us feel to practice you just feel that because you are making the choice to break a generational curse or to end a war within your control you think somebody else had to pick up that fight for you too hmm. fight your own battles so just like in the Middle East where we are praying for peace and we are praying for a peaceful situation because I looked at the news over the weekend and I saw some really disturbing images of what we would call communal spaces being bombed. Mm -hmm. Imagine you just casually walking on High Street and Library Corner get bombed just so. So imagine how those persons would have felt in that scenario. I'm not saying, and listen to it well, eh? I'm not saying that I'm in support of any form of violence. Mm -hmm. But it's at this scenario right now, and we have to pray that it comes to a swift end. Yeah, and I was actually having a conversation with a friend, and we didn't get to finish the conversation, but... The money on the phone down. Well, actually, no, Aaron, it was a WhatsApp call. You just pay for your WhatsApp calls? Aaron? the wi-fi the wi-fi in marvella went down no Aaron, right and we actually have redundancies set up where i live anyway so i don't know what you're talking about i'm just saying i'm just saying and um a man about that work from home life boy yeah you have no choice bro <laughs> you have no choice it's like i have one i'm a, a jersey representing one organization and then uh I'm doing work for another one i i don't have it like that but if you like work at nasa no there's just a t-shirt bro it's that, just a t-shirt. No comment. Anyhow, you're gonna say the the the, the S and NASA is for smaller what? Um, what what I want to point out is that this is one of those situations where if you're looking for evidence to support your point or your position, you'll find it. You'll find it, right? So my thing is not about trying to argue about who is right for believing what or who is wrong for doing what, right? Because the historical context is such that if you measure it in a 10 year, 20 year, 50 year, 80 year, 100 year, 200 year, 500, 1000 year span, depending on the timeline you use, you'll find that um, the context yes. shifts such that both parties have justifiable positions. What I'm talking there's about. Point. Sorry, I was going to say that there's a point to refute your claim based on the timeline that's it. Right. Time frame, sorry, time frame. Right. Excellent. What we looking at, what i looking at right now is that we have to be able to have the conversations about what's going on now so that we could support decisions that are being made in the interest of a peaceful future right they are the, the thing is you could actually disagree with somebody without the conversation becoming a disagreement you could have a conversation with somebody and if you could emotionally and intellectually process their position and consider yours nobody's asking you to change your mind or to you know jump the fence what we're saying is that this is an opportunity for us to start practicing peace to to get why this person i'm having this conversation with or seeing posting these things has the position that they've taken right as i say this is one of those situations where depending on what you support you'll find the evidence to support it and i'm not even talking about the misinformation and disinformation or passing i'm just saying that in this particular conversation let us be mindful to one, be respectful, and two, to recognize that there's an opportunity for us to learn. Because the thing is, even more information might not change your position, it might not change your mind, but we have to be able to have these conversations 
if we want to be able to advance the thing so that it doesn't happen again. I, I like your, your ability to bring that uh, geopolitical situation into our personal lives because right now we have family, work environments, uh, neighbors, such social spaces, relationships that require having to recognize that both parties right and both parties wrong that might require having to take a different approach if you want to rectify so predicament is um predicament is my word because i could be right but i could i could also be better you know um and to, to bring it back again huh because you know i was trying my best to bring things back home right right in scenarios yeah i hope i hope um customs ain't I hope customs ain't listen to you saying that. Don't you have a trip to go on just now? Is that uh-huh. one? Yeah. Uh huh. No, no, no. It's, it's not an international trip. It's not international. Oh, okay, okay. It, it's, it's a local trip. All right. You're a right. Mm-hmm. No, that's a local something. <laughs> um. No, but but really and truly, right? If you really look at this scenario, and I think what we need to start to do in our lives is practice peace. Mm-hmm. The gun hurt me to say this, huh? Not all disputes need to end in something physical. Wait, why that hurt you to say? Huh? Why that hurt you to say? Because I found recently, I found myself watching a lot of the um, is the slap championship videos. No comment. Yeah, I don't know why. It's kind of amusing. Mm-hmm. And by right. coming on radio to tell people that things shouldn't end in them. Um, yeah, no. and that, that's the thing. It's like I, I watching something that's predominantly a violent sport battle and coming to tell here people here do let end in violence but anyhow so you're, you're normal you're creating and normalizing and reinforcing synapses that telling your brain competitive mm-hmm. entity competitive violence for entertainment it's purposes is okay All right and you don't expect your brain to acknowledge that hey we well violence is normalized you know what's mm-hmm. what's, what's the big deal Anyway, this is me actively listening. So anyway, let me let you finish. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. But really and truly, we need to start practicing peace in our lives. Not every disagreement in a relationship needs to end up in days of unwarranted bickering. Mm-hmm. Not every disagreement in the workplace needs to end up in a warning letter or a cuss out with you mm-hmm. and your boss. Not every disagreement about parking needs to end up with you and somebody rushing for the same park or you currently with somebody for how they park in two park so that you wouldn't get a park i want to be a, a 36 about this but we've seen parking situations result in loss of life this year and that, that was this year or last year that can't be last year already i think that was last year you know if it's the one i think if it's the one i think you are talking about and last year already yeah i, I think that was anyway yeah yeah mm-hmm. right the thing is we need to practice peace and to practice peace you need to be self-aware you need to exercise self-control and you need to exercise empathy hmm. self-control. I'm, I'm not telling anybody to be a whipping boy for anybody but i thought just now you was talking about turning the other cheek but what i'm but let me finish now Oh, sorry sir this is me apparently hyperactively listening go ahead yeah boy but what i'm saying is if you realize that a situation sometimes is getting a little too heated it is okay to walk away it is okay to table a conversation in a relationship for another day it's okay to tell your boss hey i don't think we'll get the desired result out of this conversation now can we continue this another time it's okay to tell your co-host sometimes actively listening should be a quiet non-judgmental facial space <laughs> why say oh, while you deliver your points i say no i mm-hmm. have, have less control over my face than one would think All right and secondly i just saying that one of my ways of expressing how attentively i'm listening is actually referencing information you presented in conversation this is not an Aaron thing this is a i hate the idea that i would be talking to somebody 
and they're not listening to what it is i'm saying because they pretty much just waiting to see something if i made a mistake and you ain't catch up on it and bring it to my attention then i might continue down the road with that mistake if i'm expressing an inconsistency and i'm not checked on it well then i'll continue expressing said inconsistency what i mean is i i think our conversation is supposed to be an interactive thing not interruptive but interactive but, interac- but you see i'm glad they bring up this crap on season and inconsistencies because that leads me to another thing that has been trending <laughs> in here in Trinidad and Trinidad. <laughs> Are you talking about course dotish? Um, the the organization shall remain unnamed right, to right, protect right. the identity and ourselves. And ourselves, right? Mm. Honestly and truly, guys, as a gentleman that sits in an accounting chair for five days out of seven for the week, mm-hmm. one of the most disturbing things that I continue to see is persons talking about is who fault is this and what and what. Mm. Now, I'm not coming to chime in on who fault is what. What I'm coming to talk about is the best business practice. Okay. I think rec- oh, I think on Saturday when I opened my laptop, I saw that an American bank would have had to halt at least how much of hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions because there was a glitch in their system. Mm-hmm. So glitches do happen. Technology does technology. Technology, technologies. Mm-hmm. Right? Just like how a child will child, right. technology will technology. The people will people. People mm-hmm. will people. Right? I like that. So I do understand that mistakes can happen when technology is involved. I do understand that the central bank of a country controls a conversion rate every day. And then that is passed on to the um, commercial banks, mm-hmm. which is then passed on to the customer. So it's a chain of command. In right, 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 right. But if you take mistakenly <laughs> erroneously erroneously mm-hmm. 800 dollars off of my account mm-hmm. i expect that 800 dollars will be put back into my account yeah i want to hear nothing about the conversion because that no, is not a transaction that is not that i initiated right exactly right with that being said the best practice in this scenario is that a business is supposed to absorb that loss mm-hmm. because of the conversion rate. Right. That's all I'm going to answer. The business is supposed to absorb that loss. Mm-hmm. Any on, further on, dis- you know what? You're right. Go ahead. Any further dispute about the, converse, the, the conversion rate now has to be taken up between the business and their banker. Right or right or quite or quite. Or. The consumer has nothing to do in that process. Yeah, it's like you being victimized for being a victim <laughs> you know what i mean uh, l- listen you're right as the business that was responsible for or at least party to that infraction you absorb and then you rectify with your financial partner let them deal with that on the back end the customer not even the customer you can't call me a customer if that transaction is duplicate transactions you're talking about, you know? Yeah. Trans- that that already occurred. We already um we already pay for. We already move on. People talk asking questions like why anyway. Anyway, I mean too soon, we don't have enough resolution to address that. Well, I I just amazed. I am just amazed that you could be a country manager for an organization like this and just say no comment and hang up the phone when news houses approaching you for remember that is the sixth watch watch phrase yeah, of Chipotle and Tobago I have to go oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tengo que ir, <laughs> right no 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 but but really and truly yeah if if, if, if I, again we're looking at it on a business level and i bring it down to a personal level again mm. if a company incorrectly pays me the wrong amount due yeah. to over or under calculation of mm. a statutory payment like nis or pay mm-hmm. you think i could go to bir and tell bir that right. no i have to go to my hr or payroll department and tell them that this calculation was wrong and mm-hmm. they had a deal with BIR but they had to pay me my money right yeah, when yeah. at the end of the year our audit is done or our recon is done 
and you realize what the error was, you claim it back. I know me. Yeah. Yeah, no point in time the customer so the customers because the horror story mm-hmm. starts surfacing. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to have to suffer the consequences of your business's infractions or at least the exposure that you passed on to your clients, to your customers. That anyway. Pretty pretty yeah. comment, Byron. Pretty comment. Pretty comment. No, and the and the catch in it is uh, I understand now that we live in a time where social media is prevalent right out right out, right out. so we go to social media with everything in the hope that somebody will see it and channel it to the right people or some news house might pick up the story and run with it mm-hmm. but where do we really go when we have issues like this that will actively seek our interests as consumers when i am um, when i tag you in our facebook post saturday morning i believe it was mm-hmm legitimately i was trying to draw your attention to it because i want to know who do you go to like it, is there a, a general ombudsman or something is there a, a, a consumer affairs who who is it? i saw that consumer affairs put out a statement yeah all right yeah. all right i gotta look for it but, mm. uh, yeah i know but yeah. the catch in it is who do we go to that is going to actively seek our interest mm-hmm. and and I keep saying, and deal with the necessary parties to ensure that something like this does not happen again. Right. Because I ain't going to lie to you. I'm dreading right now. No, I ain't going to lie. Let, 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 let's preface this properly. <laughs> let's preface this properly. Because of, <laughs> because of the weight loss journey that I've been on, mm. right? I had to redo my entire wardrobe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so a lot of persons in like locally would have benefited from a lot of my clothes. So I donated a lot of clothes to people. Noted. Yeah. Noted. What? What's up? And I ain't got a shirt. Brother man, you look like you wearing large. Aaron, this is a small t shirt. Ricardo, and I I was and wearing mediums. Ed- I was wearing extra large last year. Oh, oh hey, well then, yeah, I cap it in that. Um, exactly. Oh, thank you for saying that. If you were large, if you were extra large, and I was wearing larges, larges, you know. Yeah. But you know what? Um, hey, keep it up, bro. I, that, there's nothing right. like having to give away them clothes because you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey. All right. Real proud, of you, bro. Thank you that, very much, and I'm proud of you too. I'd have picked up, pick up the little Arab with her wife for starting that yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. That right. accountability group. Right? But anyway, so so the reason why I'm saying this, and I, I lead in this argument like this. So in giving away so much clothes, obviously I had to get new clothes. Mm-hmm. I am dreading to see what customs is going to do to me with the amount of clothes that I have purchased. Well, they already have a recording. Are you saying you like to bring it home? Eh? You like to bring things home? Yeah. Hmm. But the catch in it is, <laughs> in this scenario now, <laughs> for me to file a complaint against customs. Oh, whack, 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 oh my god. Whack them customs. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you're gonna get jammed. Anyway, yeah, right. go ahead. For me to file a, a complaint against customs who will charge you X amount one day for the same item they'll charge you Y amount the next day for. Mm. Yeah. Who do same thing? Who do I file complaints about? Can you to him, to, yeah, can you go to the police station and say, hey, listen, this place that I conducted business with charge me again, right? And then when they return the money, they return less than what they took. Is that theft? Even if it's not fraud, is it theft? to replace less money than you took that's actually a really good question though. why thank you i'm gonna put it on Insta, on, on on the facebook now and see if any of my lawyer friends could try me yeah but oh, you, you, could, you, could, you could put it on um on um twix what's up um, sorry x whatever the name of the thing is now x and yeah, real confusing. yeah there is a social media man you go, you go, no no go. just x that's x i just post on x but recently I started to post more on Facebook. Um because they're growing up. 
Yeah, Facebook is really anyway. Um, but, <laughs> but really and truly, guys, you know, a lot yeah. has been taking place and a lot of predicaments have been occurring here in our country. Mm-hmm. And I think right now we need to highlight a positive predicament that our country has been in. Trinidad and Tobago currently sits on top of Group B of the Nations League in CONCACAF with three wins from three games. Notwithstanding the brilliant comeback that we witnessed on Friday night at the Hazley Crawford Stadium, coming from 2-0 down against Guatemala to win the game 3-2 with a free kick of sublime quality, a Messi-esque free kick from Nathaniel James. Love the fact that you say Messi-esque, you know. Yeah, because Messi's really... left foot. Messi has probably one of the best left feet in in, in, in world football. No, I just know as a man, you man, I would expect you to say something like, you know, Rashford-esque or... Um, what, Rashford is a right footer. I don't die, not talking about the foot. I <laughs> talk about the fact that they don't have a single man you player that you could have used to describe. Beckham. Yeah, anyway, you, you're, making a, you're making a point, sorry. Sorry you for being so inter- I was being interactive. Sorry, sorry. No, for, no but really, and truly, it, it, was, it was heart-filling to watch that game on Friday in the stadium and to see so many persons head out there, 7,000 plus of us, I think it was. I am... Um, confused as to why i did not know that that game was happening until 20 minutes before it started like oh no i you you know what drew my attention to it the poorly constructed graphic releasing the names of the players on the squad for this game for this international fixture period that is what drew my attention to it man going on national radio and say the poorly constructed i didn't see it i didn't see it good thing it didn't because you as a graphic artist would not have appreciated it um <laughs> that no honestly that is what drew my attention said purely based on the fact that persons were talking negatively about it on social media so it's like, that hey, is, that is we sad. have internet i know he's like wait now we have international fixtures coming up let me see who we playing hey we playing guatemala the... but then again i started to see persons sharing not the game enough the vibe section which is a section that fans could pay to go to watch the game in the stadium so it's like an all-inclusive thing like Trinity Pussy, mm-hmm. but just in football, the vibe section. Okay, okay. Right? But, hey, if, if we get 7,000 people in the stadium for a game against Guatemala, I take it? Yeah. When, when last year so, 7,000 people went to watch a Trinidad game? Exactly my point. But um, Wednesday, mm-hmm. the El Clasico de San Fernando returns to Lewis Street, okay. where Presentation College our alma mater will be facing Naparima boys at 4 p.m. on Lewis Street. So if you are able to attend, head on down, go and take in some schoolboy football. Probably make a spin down there and see if I'm France on them. I know, go and say that. No, I'm not France. Fram. Fram. Yeah, yeah. The, he might be if he's in the country. Um, So, Carol, I go down tomorrow now. Yeah, yeah, so he ain't say nothing yet. Make sure I work with your umbrella though. But my umbrella, I have a press hat to put on. Hey, yeah, you're getting, an, you're getting an umbrella. You're getting that. Yeah, because the kind of heat we experienced in these past couple of days, we need the umbrella. Bro. Between this 37,000 degrees Celsius weather, one minute, and then snatch your clothes off the line, rainfall, the next I I don't work with umbrella. That's a good call. I appreciate you. Right? But really, and truly, guys, you know, it is ultimately, it still is mental health month. Mm-hmm. Aaron, and- how are you? Well, I'm gonna finish them. I'm gonna finish the the part of first before I'm, you ask the question. I'm being interactive. Right? I'm being interactive. I know that, and I appreciate that. But no, 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 no. That, uh, that's on me. That's on me. But really and truly, guys, it is mental health month, and looking after your mental health is your responsibility. It's not your girlfriend's responsibility. It's not your boyfriend's responsibility. It's not your boss' responsibility or your mother and your father's responsibility. Looking after your mental health is your responsibility. And admittedly, during the those COVID times that we would have lived in for the past two years or so, or three years or, or thereabout, right? Those COVID times, we would have become more aware of things like mental health, mm-hmm. right? So, and with the advent of us heading back outside into the real world, the perils that face us sometimes torment our mental health to the point where we are not able to manage them. Because, I'll face it, watching the news is probably one of the most depressing things I could ever do. 
which is why I try my best to avoid it on a daily basis. I probably watch the news, not tea, not local news. Huh? I probably watch the news once a week, if so much, just to stay abreast of certain things. Yeah. Even, even worse, as a sports fan, an avid sporting fan, looking at the news of full and, and supporting Manchester United is one of the most detrimental things for your mental health. It sometimes could be akin to supporting the West Indies cricket team who is not in the World Cup that is taking place where Afghanistan beat England this weekend. Hey. With some, with a, one of the best displays of spin bowling I've seen in a long time. Hey. Hey. Anyway. But, but every day around us, there are so many things that can and possibly do affect our mental health. The real thing is what you are doing on your own to manage it. Yeah. Yes, Rick. Now I was, I was gonna ask, how are you? But you're, you're, you're preempted with such um, a, a, a poignant uh, contribution there. I kind of feel like just asking you how you're doing. We, we, we've done that before. I want to answer. Yeah. I take wholeheartedly and with considerable respect for you jumping out and starting the conversation by saying, it is my responsibility. I take responsibility for my mental health. I have long gone past other people putting me in a in a mood, and I'm not wasting any more time on an exchange or an encounter than I have to. So what happens is, I do as best as possible to protect my peace. I believe that peace is a tangible thing that we can manage. I do entertain spaces conversations uh people i don't entertain anything that could contaminate another space longer than it has to so even in terms of news i don't watch news because i in news all the time right between the social media work the number of conversations i would go through during the course of the day um there was information in flux and i kind of curious that people have to dedicate time to find out what's going on because in my mind is like we always know everything that's going on all the time now i think probably 7 p.m local time should be when you stop taking any news and relax yourself at five but that's just um my personal thing unless it's tuesday night tuesday night you should definitely listen to the big band you should listen to the big band that's not news that's all these more than it's news but anyway that's that's that is that's more relaxing yeah so you can do that right you know what? I can answer it here. Don't watch news on Tuesday night. Listen to Mr. Desmond on the big bar. That's what I say. And that's, that's, that's me. I do entertain nothing. I don't have to entertain. I don't study people's business again. I don't study what people think about me. I don't study what people have to say about me. I don't study what it is people do man, unless I'm affecting my health or my, in, or my income. All right? I do have time for smalls. I do. Listen, and if I hear you about talking to me, Somebody like, boy, can't you hear what you're going to say about you? And they'd be like, hey, boy. I wonder what it is about the way we are that made him feel he couldn't tell me himself. I know they went studying, we hope you're going to do that, you know. I studying, what was my part in making Aaron uncomfortable enough that he could have an issue with me and wouldn't tell me directly? So I, I take responsibility for my role in things. I don't have time to study anything else. It helps me by one god granted me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change by giving me the courage to change the things i can and giving me the wisdom to know the difference the serenity prayer for me is one of the most potent mental health mental wellness mechanisms because she's simple things you know she's simple things right i not studying what i do have to study that's it, it, it really just that simple. There are times I would see somebody post something on Facebook and I look into comments because at my internal justice meter might shift and say, hey, this was talking shippiness. And then I'm like, you know what? I good. Backspace, backspace, backspace and continue scrolling. If I see somebody down the road doing shippiness, I might be like, so there was that one. But depending on the scenario, I will also consider the very real consequences of negative um, feedback. I might leave it be. 
like the, the days of Captain C with all get everything right, I, I had to put on that. I had to put on that because when the night come and it's me to try to fall asleep with all of the things that I did and didn't do during the course of the day, I cannot afford to be studying what you did and didn't do too. I stop taking responsibility for other people's actions, which I also remove a lot of the, the, the weight of guilt. If you made a bad decision, that's not my fault because I didn't stop you. It's not my fault because I didn't give you any other choice. You, you made the decision. If you don't like how I deal with you on something, I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm not a rash person. So I believe that if I made a decision, I probably made it for a reason. And if you're negatively impacted by such, I apologize for that, you know, but I'm not going to apologize for having to make a decision. Like I, I just maintain my peace by accepting as much responsibility as I can, but only as much as I have to. I feel like I should put up the angry card or picture for that whole segment. Anyway, what about you, Aaron? What are you, what are you doing to to, to protect your, your mental well-being? Um, I think I should preface that with the fact that I have been. The last preface lead me to go on almost the six minute round, you know. But anyway, now, let... there's actually a five. But um, for me, to give it some proper context, I have a normal job, right? I have shifts on radio. I do the shows with Kenny. Mm-hmm. I am the road DJ for Joshua Regrello, as well as I have my own private jobs that I do as well. So if I had to put that on a plate, my plate full. Mm-hmm. Like right? two hundred dollar barbecue. Well, yeah. I figure you, you don't figure if you spend two hundred dollars on a barbecue, you're supposed yeah, to be... it should be full. Yeah, yeah, right. My plate full. Mm-hmm. What I have been doing to, as you say, protect your peace, protect my peace. Sorry, tune it out. Every day at 10 p.m., my phone goes into a mode called Do Not Disturb. It comes off at 6.30 a.m. the following morning. During that period of time, you can message me, you can call me. If you are not on my favorite contacts, the phone ain't going to make a sound. And that, that list is very small. No. I think it's like six people. Mm. Me and... Four other people, five other people. We yeah, do the math. It, 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 it could be me and four, me and five, you know. I don't. Aaron, you tell me I'm not on your favorites? Yeah, you make it in. You just make it in. As in, you know what, man? No. no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, just make oh, it oh, 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 oh. Right? No, but really and truly, that's what I've been doing. I've, looked, I've, I've taught myself the ability to tune out, mm-hmm. to log out. Because if I keep going constantly, the mind will never stop. I would never get rest. And just to be transparent with the listeners on this program, Sunday night was one of the most unrestful nights I've had in a very long time. Hmm. Sunday, I worked an event in Port of Spain. I got home from the event at around, let's say, half nine minutes to 10. I was hungry, had something to eat which I think was the mistake because I've been dieting and to eat that burger at mm-hmm. the 10 in the night mm-hmm. the food and digest so it was one of the most unrestful nights I've had in a while mm-hmm. and because of that all the thoughts that I've been avoiding <laughs> hit me like a ton of bricks <laughs> on Sunday night oh my gosh I'm laughing, but I know that zone. Right? Yeah. I start to think about why is it that, let's say, for example, why, as you say, and I'm using your, your, your state, your, your rant as the, the example, why is it that I can't really change how I view the scenario, boy? Why could do to make this person think about things differently, boy? Why could do to build a relationship with this person that's a lot better than what it was before? Mm-hmm. And then when I woke up on, well, because you know you'd fall asleep in between all of this and we mm-hmm. back up and wake up. 
when I already catch myself on Monday morning, I felt heavy. Because a lot of the things I was thinking about are things that are not in my control. I can't make somebody talk to me. I can't make somebody build a better relationship with me. I can't make somebody make better life choices. So as you call it, the captain save it all mentality. You had to let go. You have to remember, as you say in the serenity prayer, you could control the things you can't. You can't change the things you can't. And let God give you the power of discernment to know what is what. So if I had to say how I protect my peace, logging off and practicing discernment. Hmm. As my old football coach used to say, John Stedman, I surely heard of, I surely heard about him. You can't teach our old dog new tricks. But what you could do is not play with that dog anymore. That's, that's what you say, you can't teach our old dog new tricks, but you don't know how to play the dog anymore? Yeah. All right. Sense? Um, but really and truly, that no, Ricardo and I, we have taken a stand here in the living room to continue to express the importance of mental health. Mm-hmm. Though we come here and sometimes he is here us talking about everything and sometimes nothing, we always stress the importance of mental health. We make it our business come October to have conversations of mental health because it's Mental Health Month. But we don't just limit it to October, we do it year round. Yeah mental health is important and your mental health is your responsibility just like how we are striving for mental health to be a universal right for all it has to start here with you i understand that sometimes taking a level of personal responsibility is difficult for a lot of us but your mental health just like your physical health is your responsibility nobody can't go to the gym to get them kind of games like what Cardo just showed you. Yeah. You have to go to the gym on your own if you want to grow muscle. If you want to eat healthy, you have to put the food in your mouth and eat healthy. If you want to become more intelligent, you have to read the books. If you want to save money and become more financially free, as they say, you had to save the money you had to make better financial decisions i, I was gonna what? say I, you need to stop shopping and, just, <laughs> just, just, just. No. <laughs> and, and, re- and really and truly, uh, anyway i will openly say it one of my biggest problems i have is that i love shoes right. on saturday i clean up my house and i check i probably have 26 pairs of shoes but two feet Yeah, you see that I buy um, I buy some shoes, man. I could buy you onto some places. All right, sweet. Um, I could buy them locally. Yeah. All right, cool. Cause I ain't looking for your customs bill now. No, I don't go back on that road again now. But it, it's places that will only charge me once for stuff because I I do really you're want them. them. You're paying them in cash. You know what? I could I could work with that. I could work with you're that. You're paying them in cash. You're paying them in cash. But really and truly, right? If I had to save money, sometimes you had to cut back on the things that you like. Mm-hmm. Facts. I can buy a shoe every month again. I cast up the bread van every evening. Yeah, hey, as I said, it's a feeling for a beef fire. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. And it all, remember, we always on this show talk about being fit. Mm-hmm. Fitness is holistic. And I'm bringing it back down to the individual again. If you make wiser financial decisions, right, by not buying food as much or not buying four kiss cake a week, which was a problem I had. Oh, yeah, but you was really on a... Um, I was on a kiss cake, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you used to meal, replace meals with kiss cake and thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You said, you really, you really kiss cake for lunch, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey. So, so is mm-hmm. your 
you are making a better financial decision by not buying so much snacks. Mm-hmm. You're saving money, which ultimately now leads you to a healthier diet. Mm-hmm. Because you're not ha- you're not going to have the high level of sugar again, which will improve your physical health. Mm-hmm. And if you don't accept it, your physical health ties to your mental and emotional health as well. Yep. So one simple change, if you make it, can impact all facets of your health, your emotional and mental and physical, financial, and even your spiritual well-being. Sanctify. Somebody told me on Friday that they love the fact that regardless of if it's a, 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 a normal shift of working or if it's the living room, that I start with a prayer. Mm-hmm. And I will tell everybody, having a relationship with God or by whichever name you call him is important. I choose every time to welcome God into every space that I have. Because... I'm a dog. Me and God is rule. Yeah. He in my front seat every day. You take the wheel and thing. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, just like the um the the hymn or the song says that God is before, behind, and all around me. Build a relationship with God or by whichever name you call him. I don't wait till you're on your deathbed. To build that relationship, huh? Hmm. Start from tomorrow morning. As a matter of fact, start from now. We talk about the prayer we just did at the start of the show. Ricardo talk about the serenity prayer. But one of the most powerful prayers that you might need to know is a simple one. It's called the Our Father. You could Google it. And sometimes you could say it. But again, we have to remember that not everybody prays or praises God by that name. So say the prayers which are relevant to you. I am a hot mess. Now, as much as I might have taught it myself as being a beacon of righteousness and light and purity and justice and hum- humility and modesty, of course. What you are speaking, and I am moved by what you're saying, and I am thinking. The same way I have the angry card or graphic. Now I have to do a graphic for when you, <laughs> you know, for when you, you wax so inspirationally, you know, I, I think I've, I, I think I've decided what I'm going to do and put it up because that was moving dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was heartfelt too. It was earnest. And while I recognize the challenge you might have had on Sunday night and the, this, the, the unrest that would have led to the mindset that led to us taking this episode to really you know just get some things off our chest it had its purpose because it dislodged things within you and being able to have a conversation you know to with somebody that you trust and in this case the listeners is important because you said something that 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 resonated when you go to the gym you had to pick it up put it down you had to push and pull at the end of the day you have the work to do but there will be people there to help you. There are instructors and trainers. There are people to keep you safe. There are cleaners. There are janitorial services. There are people who would nourish you with actual meals and with information. Right? Similarly, in the mental health work, there are people who will help you. Some of them you go to professionally. Some you go to personally. Some are incidental. Right? Some of them are there to nourish you. Some are there to hold you accountable. Right? In some cases, some will be there to medicate you because it's not always a matter of making the decisions. You know, you can't always will your mind into a state of being. Sometimes you need to help balancing things out. Right? Similarly, I will tell you, a, a lot of the times is a little decisions that consistently over time that add up. And sometimes it's about making one significant decision and managing its consequences. Last year, the Earl of Rab, Willie with Hawaii, he started a wellness group for accountability and I joined this wellness group and I will tell you that just starting to exercise had consequences. I started feeling better. My brain was releasing chemicals that helped my body feel better except for leg days. They are... <laughs> you don't act like you don't know. Right? No, don't I, act I, like I, you don't I, know. I, I love leg days. Yeah, but I hate the, day, uh, the days after. 
I love it. <laughs> you you so like, anyway, all the all the all the pain fetishes. What I'm saying is, having started exercising and developing your accountability, right? I start to develop in habits. Now, if I'm doing all this work and doing all this exercise, sometimes when the bread van pass, I don't stop it and I don't buy sweets and I don't buy the largest servings and I don't buy the. What I mean is, even in terms of just purchasing food outside and that type of thing, I've started making decisions that supplement the big decision, which is to exercise. Because I ain't gonna be doing all that work and then eating all the worse, right? By doing that now, I start to save a little bit of money because now, even if I ain't saved the money, at least there's some discretionary spending that could go in another place, you know? And it starts to move other elements or things such that physically, I'm looking and feeling better. My, my, my mindset is different because my body have reward chemicals pulsing through it and repair chemicals pulsing through it. I start to, you know, put aside a little change that even if I don't use it for myself, I could still help somebody because, all right, you might be short at 40, but there's a burger that I didn't buy. You understand? Is And it even in terms of the, the spiritual wellness now, just working out, the reason I don't go to gym to exercise is because for me, it's a very personal and meditative type thing. Right? In that moment, where it's just me and my body and my mind and my God. Sometimes, yes, I'll just be trying to get through a workout and other times it'll just be a case of... Uh, what you have for me today, boy? It just happens when I'm washing wears too. Like when I'm doing dishes, I just end up in that... That's, that's one of the most therapeutic and meditational spaces for me, doing dishes. You, you know, you mentioned in that, Ricardo. And I know again, Perlis, they close the big band time. Right? But I have to chime in on this. One of the... the the, the things which continues for me and it's something that I keep telling people about you see these them little subtle changes mm -hmm. just like every drop is filled in the bucket every subtle change impacts your your being it impacts you if you make a subtle change of listening to our music more and the music that has a positive message I'm talking about because I'm not going to hide it. There's a lot of music out there with a negative connotation. Trash. A negative connotation. <laughs> right? And I'm not negating that long time when we were growing up that that kind of music didn't exist. Mm -hmm. But the, the vulgarity of it, the, the directness of it has increased. Mm -hmm. It has lost the skill which was there a long time. If you stop listening and feeding your mind with negative media, your mindset will improve. And this is something, my last thing I'll go and say. All them relationship videos you be watching on social media, and you're seeing men and them talking about they just do this for the girl or this do that for the girl or people that are praising toxicity mm -hmm. as a positive trait in life stop viewing those things they will warp your mind and make you think that the negatives are the norm people talk that they want healthy relationships but how could you want a healthy relationship with all you are knowing and you are you are ingesting and informing yourself about is the toxicity of really of negative relationships guys i'm not saying to be a falsely positive person i'm not saying that in any way what i'm saying is you need to control the information which you put into your body as well because that not only affects your mental health, it affects your physical health, it affects your financial health, your spiritual health, and just you as a whole. I think I've got it. Well, this is Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage. Thank you for joining us in the living room tonight. I want to completely agree with DJ here on A6 Speed. Completely. Because nutrition is more than what you eat it is what you consume and that could be visually it could be orally i just saying you can't do like they on sweet bread 
Uh, well, I mean, you have you have my grandmother's sweet bread. But now, you see, old time sweet bread different. You know, old time sweet bread, I think coconut and all kind of fruit and all kind of them little red cherry and thing. Modern day, modern day sweet bread, everything powdered. Yeah. Right. And what about me? I talk about granny sweet bread and, and, and granny just message me. <laughs> so you're welcome. And I, I want my commission. So what I'm saying is, you, you, you can't have a certain output without a certain input. Right? That is it, it, that simple. It that simple. You, you, you can't you can't intake onto that negativity and then ex- expect to express and exude positivity. Thanks for the um you know the modern dance interpretations here. I appreciate it. <laughs> Where is that good? Yo, remember guys, the all glasses are peak. We don't know how much time remains, so whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. Um, I wanna end with a real very quick story. On Sunday morning, I hear we close, but no, but we're real close. Um, on Sunday morning, I went to church, and my grandmother of 94 years was at church. And as she was leaving church, she met another woman who was in her 90s as well. And to see the both of them interact, and two of them being with each other, like children, like, you know, long I see you, that is what we need more of in society. We need that constant love, that show of love and appreciation for a fellow man. As I keep saying, don't wait until it's too late and that you're printing jersey with the person face on it to show them that you love them now. I just tell only every time I come off the air that love is the currency, so spend some today. Let somebody know that you love them, guys. Please, don't wait until it's too late. I was told about an accident over the weekend in which a young lady would have lost her life. Mm. And I go and ask you this as a closing up. When last you tell your mother, your father, your family members that you love them? If the answer is a long time ago, pick up your phone and call them now and tell them that you love them. I remind you every time that culture is my code and I am DJ here on 868. And up next is Mr. Desmond with the big band. Keep it locked.